Welcome to today's webinar, Summer Meal Options for School Food Authorities. My name is Adrian Ackroyd and I look forward to presenting on today's topic. This webinar is being recorded. We'll have time for questions at the end. Please put any questions you have in the Q&A box. Here's the agenda for today's webinar. We will provide a high level overview of the summer meal options for school food authorities. We will provide guidance on how to decide which program to operate, and we will wrap up with time for questions at the end. Let's start with the old standard in Maine, the Summer Food Service Program, AKA Hot Lunch Summer. The SFSP operates in the summer when traditional school is not in session. It is used during times of emergency or unanticipated closures to ensure children still have access to nutritious meals during the school year as well. Meals are served at summer sites in income eligible areas where sponsors often offer enrichment activities. Examples of sites include schools, playgrounds, libraries, parks, or public pools. In rural communities facing access issues, meals may be approved for grab and go or delivery. This helps children who do not have access to congregate meals continue to receive nutrition over the summertime. Our office can help determine which sites can be non-congregate. And both SFAs, so school food authorities, and non-SFAs can apply to sponsor the summer food service program. Now let's review a program that we don't see often in Maine, the National School Lunch Program Seamless Summer Option. otherwise known as SSO. The SSO operates in the summer when traditional school is not in session. It is also used during times of emergency or unanticipated closures to ensure access is still available for children to receive nutritious meals. Meals are served at summer sites, does it sound familiar, um, in income eligible areas where sponsors often offer enrichment activities like SFSP, examples of sites can be school sites or community sites like playgrounds, libraries, parks, or public pools. And like the SFSP, in rural communities facing access issues, meals may be approved for grab and go or delivery. This helps ensure children who do not have access to congregate programs where congregate meals are served continue to receive nutrition over the summertime. Like with SFSP, our op office can help determine which SSO sites can operate non-congregate. Only school food authorities can apply to sponsor the SSO. And as you can see, there are many similarities to the Summer Food Service Program with SSO. Basically, SSO combines the National School Lunch Program with the Summer Food Service Program and is for school food food authorities to operate. Here are some high level differences from the Summer Food Service Program. SSO uses the same application as the School Nutrition Program in CNP Web. There is an SSO section that must be completed. The National School Lunch Program reimbursement is received rather than the higher Summer Food Service Program reimbursement rates and the National School Lunch Program School Breakfast Program meal pattern requirements must be followed, which includes vegetable subgroup requirements. We will go over more differences amongst the programs in upcoming slides. The final program we will discuss today is the National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School. Academic Summer School is when students receive credit on their transcripts or attend to advance to the next grade level. SSO is often confused for NSLP for academic summer school, but they are separate programs. When you think of this program, so NSLP for academic summer school, think of the same NSLP that you would operate during the school year. But this program operates in the summer for students enrolled in academic summer school. Meals are served at school sites only to academic summer students. The school nutrition program application in CNP web is used and the SSO option is not selected, rather the months of operation are selected and all the national school lunch program rules are in place. There are many things to consider when comparing the three programs. Let's do a deeper dive. 
we will start with establishing site eligibility. For the summer food service program, the school in the service area is at or above 50% free or reduced eligible based on the most recent ED 534 report, which is posted on our website. If the school is below 50% free or reduced eligible, but the site is currently in the pink census tract area, according to the USDA map, then the service area qualifies. And here is a link to the map. For CEP schools, individual school data is obtained by multiplying the most current school level identified student percentage by a factor of 1.6. In comparison, the SSO uses the same eligibility as SFSP. So this is one of the areas where um, they are the same. Um, the difference is that SSO is for school food authorities only, but establishing site eligibility is the same as SFSP. Whereas in contrast, the National School Lunch Program, while being for school food authorities only, um, does not have area eligibility requirements. It's a program that's only operating at schools for enrolled academic summer school students. For public schools or 6040 schools, meals served through the National School Lunch Program, even for academic summer school, are served to children at no charge through the state of Maine no charge meal law. For the summer food service program, there's an option to have enrolled sites. This is where 50% or more of the eligible children, enrolled children, are eligible for free or reduced price meals determined by approved free reduced price application or operate in an eligible area, um, for instance, using census track information. Academic summer school must be an open site if eligible. So if um, you wanted to operate the SFSP and it was for academic summer school, if it's in, um, if it's over 50%, or if it is in an area that's eligible in the pink census mapper, you must operate it as an open meal site. Another option for establishing site eligibility um, is by offering a camp program. So this, um, or creating a campsite for programs that offer a regularly scheduled food service as part of an organized program for enrolled children. These can be day camps like your park and rec camps or um, residential camps. And then finally, migrant sites, um, which are certified by a migrant organization that are sites that serve children of migrant farm workers. And for this slide and for the previous slide, there is that five-year eligibility rule where once a site um, is established area eligible, either with school data or census tract data, it is eligible for a period of five years. Every year we recheck eligibility to push out that five-year period, um, but there is that five-year threshold. So for SSO, this is another area where it's the same as the Summer Food Service Program. Um, however, with the National School Lunch Program in the summer months, it, the sites are only the school that's having academic summer school, and it's only for those who are enrolled in academic summer school. So no community sites, no open sites, nothing of that nature. It's for academic summer school students at the academic summer school site. There are different application processes for the programs. This is one area where choosing SSO can reduce administrative burden as the application is part of the school nutrition program application rather than a separate application like the summer food service program. For the summer food service program, you'll find the SFSP application in CNP web through the SFSP module. If you need help, you can work with our office on that. Eligible sites can be added to the application throughout the summer, but they must be approved before operations in order to claim meals. And the deadline for the application um, for this year is April 21st, if you receive USDA commodities for your summer program. Um, and if you do not, you have until June 2nd um, to get that application in so we can review and work on any edits with you in time um, to meet our final deadline for approval. With the seamless sum summer option, you'll find the SSO application actually um, within the school nutrition program application that you complete for NSLP. It's part of the NSLP application. Um, you definitely want to work with our office on guidance um, and express interest in applying so we can help walk you through that process. And the deadline for this is June 15th. 
in um, National School Lunch Program for the academic summer school. You'll also find what you need in the School Nutrition Program section. The application can be for the entire upcoming year. If your summer school happens in July or August, you would be doing the 2025 School Nutrition Program application and select July and August as part of your operating period. Again, you wanna work with our office so we know um, that you're doing this, that we can help you, that we can get the approvals in. Um, and the deadline for this is June 15th. One of the major differences amongst the programs is meal pattern. SFSP uses a streamlined meal pattern while SSO and NSLP for academic summer school use the traditional school breakfast program and national school lunch program meal patterns. Some of the uh, major differences that we can talk about is with SFSP, um, the same meal pattern um, is used for all age, age groups. So there's no grade level groups like you would see with the school, new, school breakfast program or the national school lunch program. With SFSP, um, you can offer larger portions to older students to make sure that they have the nutrition they need. So even though the portions um, are the same for all age groups, you do have that flexibility um, to offer larger portions for um, high school age students. Offer versus serve is allowed. Um, and then camps and closed enrolled sites can offer family style service. With the seamless summer option, OVS is allowed, um, but the major difference is you're using the school breakfast program, the national school lunch program, or if you're doing after school snack, if that's part of your um, programming um, with enrichment, um, you have to use those meal patterns. So the same meal patterns you use during the school year. Uh, one of the flexibilities is for um, your open sites under SSO, you can use the grade grouping that best matches the open sites population. So if your site, the majority of the people attending that site are K-5 level, you can use the K-5 meal pattern. If the majority of the site um, are 9-12, you would use 9-12, so on and so forth, um, but they must be open sites for that flexibility. The milk variety and subgroup requirements for vegetables are in place. The whole grain rich standards are in place. Um, however, camps and closed enrolled sites can still offer family style service, but just with the school breakfast program, national school lunch program, meal pattern requirements. And then when you're thinking NSLP for academic summer school, this is the same NSLP you're operating during the school year, um, same OVS requirements, same meal pattern requirements. Um, just think about it as an extension of your school year operations. Here is a snapshot of the Summer Food Service Program meal uh, pattern requirements. There are no vegetable subgroup requirements, as I mentioned before, and the same quantities are offered for all ages. Enriched grains can be offered, and there is more choice in the type of milk to serve. You can offer whole milk. Uh, we encourage the continued use of whole grain rich items and National School Lunch Program milk requirements to ensure children receive items that they are familiar with during the school year and for the more nutritious options. Um, but you don't have to. You have options with the Summer Food Service Program. So as you can see, it's a bit more streamlined. And this might be hard to read on your screen, so I apologize for that. But um, this is posted on our Summer Food Service Program web page towards the bottom of that page. Again, one of the major differences between SFSP and SSO is the meal pattern. Let's compare the number and type of meals that can be served. So with the summer food service program, up to two meal types per day, except lunch and supper combined can be offered. And then up to three meal types per day for migrant sites and camps can be offered. And the type of meals are breakfast, lunch, snack, an AM snack or a PM snack, and supper. The seamless summer option is the same as the summer food service program here, whereas the national school lunch program is the same as national school lunch program. Breakfast, lunch, and after school snack can be served if approved. The reimbursement received is another area that differs. 
With the Summer Food Service Program, all meals served to children 18 and under in eligible areas can be claimed. Um, I do have the link to the SFSP rate chart here. And the rate, rate period, so the SFSP rates are effective January through December. So the rates that we are gonna go through on the next slide are going to be what you receive in June, July, and August for SFSP operations. Whereas for the seamless summer option, you receive the free rate for breakfast, lunch, and snack for the school breakfast program NSLP snack rates. And here's a link to that rate table. Rates are effective July through June. So the next slide I show you is going to be what our 2024 reimbursement rates are. So it's what you'll receive if you operate in June and they will change for July and August. And then for the National School Lunch Program, meals are claimed by individual status. So with SSO, you are claiming the free rate for everybody um, for school breakfast program, NSLP, snack, free rates. Whereas with National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School, you're claiming by individual status. Notice the asterisks. Um, Again, you might be operating CEP or special provision two. So you wanna do the same claiming process that you are doing um, this school year for, um, for National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School. Or if it's a base year, you're gonna start your second year um, next year. And David Hartley in our office can talk more through that. Um, I'm providing a very high level overview so he can answer specific questions about if this is your base year, you're operating academic summer school, um, what July and August would look like for National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School. But the point of this slide is to let you know that you are getting your traditional um, school breakfast program NSLP snack rates. Again, they're effective July through June, and uh, you will receive the combination of state and federal um, reimbursement to equal the free rate for public students that you are serving. As promised, here's the 2024 rate chart comparison. Here are the SFSP rates for 2024. So these are what you'll receive for the entire summer. If you are rural or self-prep, you're going to get $2.9775 um, for your breakfast rate. You are going to get $5.2125 for your lunch or supper. And then for snack, $1.2375 two, three, five per snack served. Um, and that um, is slightly lower if you are vended or an urban site, um, vended and an urban site. So if you are in an urban area, but you're self prep, you're gonna get that higher rate. For SSO, um, I pulled out the free rates. Um, the higher rates you see here include prefer performance-based reimbursement, um, for lunch, the higher rate you see here for breakfast um, includes severe need, um, and there's the snack rate. Um, so what you see here are um, an example of the rates you would see for 2024 reimbursement for June. Again, they are expected to change once the 2025 rates will be received. So you will see a difference in July and August potentially if they increase the rates. And then here's your traditional NSLP rates. Again, think NSLP for academic summer school, just a continuation of your NSLP in the school year, including um, the rates. Again, what you see here is for June, um, it will change in 2025, more likely than not. And as a reminder, meals at no charge for public, publicly funded students in NSLP schools applies over the summer months. Here are the differences amongst meal service locations. So for the summer food service program, we went over some site types earlier, um, but some examples of sites include schools, camps, churches, community centers, housing projects, libraries, migrant centers, parks, playgrounds, pools, and other public sites where children gather. For SSO, it's the same as the summer food service program. Um, but for a national school lunch program, you're only operating at schools or residential childcare institutions that operate National School Lunch Program for academic summer school students or for year-round academic students. Okay. 
Let's compare the eligible participants for the Summer Food Service Program, anyone 18 and younger and persons 19 or older with a physical or mental disability as defined by the state are eligible for reimbursable meals at approved sites. SSO is the same for the Summer Food Service Program, um, but for our National School Lunch Program in Academic Summer School, students must be enrolled in Academic Summer School um, to be claimed for reimbursement for the meals. Uh, that are served to them. There are differences amongst the accountability that must be used for meal counting and claiming. With the summer food service program, um, a tick sheet method is used unless camp or upward bound sites or you have a conditional non-congregate site, that is a new thing. Um, if you are considering wanting to know what conditional non-congregate is, you are likely having to do summer food service program training and you will hear all about that during that um, training. Each site must have one tick sheet per day per meal served. You wanna make sure sheets are dated and labeled with the meal type and service time. Um, however, if you um, have a camper enrolled site, upward bound site or a conditional non-congregate site, um, or I should say a camp upward bound or conditional non-congregate site, you're going to do accountability by name. Um, and then you must have monthly consolidated meal counts and save documentation. Again, if you're doing accountability by name, we want to maintain confidentiality by not having overt identification. The purpose of that is just to know um, who, in a confidential way, with your own record keeping, um, is eligible for reimbursement. As um, with camps or upward bound or conditional non congregate sites, you can only claim um, children who meet the free reduced income guidelines. Seamless Summer Option has the same accountability methods as the Summer Food Service Program. So here's another area where they're the same. Whereas with National School Lunch Program in the summertime for academic summer school, um, you are following the National School Lunch Program accountability requirements. Current school year meal benefit applications, if applicable, um, point of service accountability by student, Meals are claimed by individual status unless you are doing CEP, SP2. Continue the school year accountability and claiming process that's required. Um, and you want to save eligibility and point of service documentation. CNP Web is the program used to file claims for reimbursement for each program. For the Summer Food Service Program, the claim is under the SFSP module. For SSO and National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School, it's under the School Nutrition Program module in CNP Web. Another area that differs is the USDA Commodity Benefit. For the Summer Food Service Program, sponsors receive 1.5 cents per meal for sponsors and self-prep sites. You may also receive bonus commodities as available. If you are operating SSO, however, you get the National School Lunch Program Commodity Benefit, which for school year 2025 is 45 cents per meal served. And you may also receive bonus commodities as available. So um, this is another area difference. If you choose SSO, you get that higher commodity rate that you would get like National School Lunch Program. Monitoring differ, differs amongst the programs. For the Summer Food Service Program, um, there's the requirements to do a pre-operational visit form for new sites or sites with operational problems, a first two-week site visit form for new sites or sites with operational problems, and a four-week site monitoring form for all sites. Um, and um, a newer um, allowance is that the two-week visit, if it's required, um, and the four week visit can be done at the same time within the first two weeks of operation. Whereas with the seamless summer option, um, you have to do a review of meal counting, claiming and meal pattern compliance at least once during each site's operation. And we will have an SSO uh, site monitoring form um, for you to use if you wanna use a state agency resource, um, it will be posted on our website. And for the National School Lunch Program, um, it's the same requirements like the school year. Um, 
by February 1st each year, you have to do the on-site review of lunch counting and claiming for each school um, according to traditional requirements, if that applies to you. At the state agency, we monitor each program differently. For the summer food service program, we conduct an SFSP review every three years, more frequently based on program size and prior problems identified by the state agency. Um, if you are a larger sponsor, um, you have likely had reviews more often than three years because of the, our review requirements in the past. Uh, with the summer, um, the seamless summer option, the administrative reviews are actually consistent with National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program requirements. If you're up for an administrative review um, and operate SSO, we must include one SSO site in an administrative review of the SFSP participating in SSO. And that site is reviewed during the summer before or after you receive your NSLP administrative review. So you would see us twice with SSO. And then with the National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School, um, that's your traditional administrative review every five years that we come and visit you and we have lots of fun. Um, and then um, you may receive an AR more frequently based on prior problems identified by the state agency. The public notification requirements differ. For the Summer Food Service Program, the state agency must send public media notice regarding program and eligibility. Um, so we do this on your behalf, but sponsors are encouraged to do that media release as well to help promote your programs for the SFSP. With the Seamless Summer Option, public media notice may be done, but it's not required. Um, the School Food Authority, um, on the other hand, must state in the National School Lunch Program Seamless Summer Option application how each site, excluding closed enrolled sites, will promote the availability of meals to children in the community. And with the National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School, the School Food Authority must send the public media notice regarding program and letter of notice with an application, if applicable, <laughs> to parents for all children in attendance at the school at the beginning of each school year. So this is your, you know, before the start of operations, your required public media notice that you send out um, to let the public know that you're operating the National School Lunch Program. Um, and if you're not, um, if you are a school or a district that has to offer a free and reduced price meal benefit application, um, providing a notice of that of being available to parents for all children in attendance. And a more recent comparison to make are the options for grab and go or delivered meals, um, otherwise known as non-congregate options. So with the summer food service program, rural eligible sites with no congregate meal service available can apply for meals to go or delivered meals. Conditional non-congregate sites can operate in ineligible locations, so non-area eligible locations, and claim meals for free or reduced priced eligible households. With the seamless summer option, the non-congregate choices are the same as the summer food service program. However, with the national school lunch program for the academic summer school, um, the, the non-congregate options, um, the permanent non-congregate programs are not allowed. They're not available with the National School Lunch Program like they are with SFSP and SSO, the Rural Non-Congregate Program. All right, so after providing all of this information to compare, where do you begin to decide? Well, we have created a decision tree to help with making the right choice. The first question you ask is, are you operating academic summer school? Enrolled students attend to advance to the next grade or receive credit, yes or no? And then you follow along this decision tree. Let's start with yes. So yes, you are. The next question you ask yourself, and this has to do with the meal, um, with the regulations, local and federal. Is your meal site over 50% free reduced eligible by school or census tract data? Are you a CEP school? or did the site qualify without waivers any time between 2020 or 2023? Let's start with no. Nope, that is not the site. The next question you'd ask is, are there any schools in your district 
50% or more for your reduced? Yes, let's say there is. Then you would work with our office to see if one school can qualify the other school, school to operate the Summer Food Service Program, or if you were interested, the SSO. So there's an opportunity there um, to do SSO or SFSP um, and provide meals to the community rather than just your enrolled academic summer school population. Um, however, if you answered no, you can operate the National School Lunch Program for academic summer school and still offer meals at no charge um, due to the state of Maine law. All right, so let's say that we back up. You are operating academic summer school and that site is over 50% free reduced or meets the other criteria. So that's a yes. You would operate an open SFSP site um, or work with our office to continue the seamless summer option. All right, so then if you asked yourself that first question and it's no, you're not doing academic summer school, maybe you're doing a summer enrichment program, maybe you have Parks and Rec operating at your sites, maybe you don't have anything going on in your school, but you wanna be a summer food service program site to service the community and offer meals to go um, or things of that nature. So that answer is no. So then are the sites that you're considering over 50% free reduced by school or census tract data or CEP? Or did you um, did the site qualify for SFSP without waivers anytime between 2020 and 2023? Again, that's that five-year eligibility. If the answer is yes, you can operate an open SFSP site or a closed enrolled program if eligible, and you would work with our office to become approved for that. If the answer is no, um, you would work with us to see if we can figure out any other eligibility options that might be available to you um, to make it a closed site or an open site um, if maybe um, you're offering meals to um, a subsidized housing facility. We can take a look at the income guidelines for that and establish eligibility. We have some other um, tools that we can use so we can help with that. And we can also look at census tract averaging if um, the census tract qualifies for averaging so we can help with that. All right, so I threw a lot of information at you. Um, we do have this information for you on our website. It's on our program page Program page for the National School Lunch Program. Um, I pulled all of the comparison chart slides from a resource that we created. That's an SFSP, SSO, and SLP comparison chart. So that comparison chart is, for, is there for you to take a look at. And then we also have that decision tree available for you. And then I also included the link to our Summer Food Service Program website for you to start taking a look at those resources as well. So now you have a better idea which program you may choose. What are your next steps? For the Summer Food Service Program, make sure that if you don't operate the SFSP but want to, contact our office if you're interested in becoming a new sponsor. Sign up for training. So this would be for everybody. Um, um, you wanna try to sign up for training. Uh, the dates have been established. Our Thursday update has registration information. And then you wanna complete the 2024 SFSP application and CNP web by the deadlines. Um, they are not open yet. We are waiting on um, some enhancements um, through our program, um, but we will let you know um, once that is open for you to complete. And then you want to train your staff before operations begin. For the seamless summer option, if you don't currently operate SSO, but you want to contact our office if you're interested in becoming a new sponsor. Um, again, you wanna receive training. Our SFSP training is relevant to SF SSO. As you um, could see early on, there's a lot of similarities, um, but there are some differences. The major differences um, were included in today's training, and then we can provide additional SSO technical assistance as needed. 
If you are operating SSO in June 2024, the 2024 school nutrition program application will need to be adjusted. For July and August of 2024, the 2025 school nutrition program in CNP Web will need to be completed. And then you want to make sure you train your staff before operations begin. For National School Lunch Program for Academic Summer School, you want to complete the 2025 School Nutrition Program application in CNP Web and select the summer months you are claiming for. If you operate Academic Summer School in June of 2024, um, you want to adjust and claim using your 2024 application. We threw a lot of information at you today. Um, you might have some questions. Here's our general contact information for the Child Nutrition Office. And you can always stay connected with Maine Department of Education using these methods. As promised, um, you may have questions. So we save time for um, questions Today, how can I help you? To clarify, a summer rec camp site still needs to be approved at 50% free and reduced or in the pink census area. So the question is, if it's a parks and rec site, how can that site qualify? So if it qualified um, anytime between 2020 and 2023, we can use past qualification to requalify it for 2024. If it did not qualify or if it's a new site, you would need to um, use school data. So the area, they attend, the school, that's the attendance area of the camp um, or the pink census track to qualify. Um, and if those aren't working, you can just, we can work with our office to see if we can help you qualify it as a closed enrolled site or a campsite, um, which allows you to claim only campers who qualify for free or reduced price meals. If our district chooses CEP for SY25, and we have a school that will be over 50% with the multiplier, will the school be eligible as a summer food service site this summer? Nope, if you are doing um, CEP for 2025, that's gonna uh, be your 2025 summer food service program, not 24. How long does it usually take to get a site approved? So um, we look at sites that have been submitted on um, a rolling basis. So we um, once the application opens and we anticipate it to be open um, in March, um, once the application is open, um, our team starts looking at the applications and the sites that have been um, submitted for our review um, on a rolling basis. If you have questions about whether or not your sites are going to qualify or you want to start looking at new sites, you can work with our office ahead of time to see if that would qualify um, to see if you want to operate the SFSP for that site or SSO. SFSP for disability is 19 and over or 19 and younger? For um, So SFSP, any child 18 and younger um, qualifies. The 19, um, the disability for 19, and I'm gonna go to that slide to make sure that I am giving you the right information. This is quite slow, isn't it? Um, is 19, there we go. I went too fast. This is what happens. Eligible participants. All right, we're getting there. <laughs> Am I making everybody's brain scramble with that? All right, let's see. I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. There we go. All right, so anyone 18 or younger um, or persons 19 and older uh, with a physical or a mental disability as defined by the state. Right, so that was the end of the questions in the Q&A box. We're gonna give it another minute to see if people are furiously typing um, questions. Oh, 
Okay. So that ends today's webinar. Thanks everybody for being in attendance today. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me, Adrian Ackroyd, adrian.ackroyd at main.gov. Thanks and have a great day.